So next up I've got my head harness. And this is sort of kind of a heavy duty one. People actually will attach weights to it uh, and do weighted neck exercises, which to me uh, seems really inappropriate, at least for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna judge anybody. I started out with you know, this, the stuff I got from physical therapists, like looping a band over, kind of getting some tension and resisting it. Uh, and so I've had to scale it up um, and kind of just uh, trust my knowledge and instincts about what was safe for me. And so what I've been doing is isometrics, where I'll put the head harness on, I've got a mouth guard, which is really helpful because the right side of my jaw will dislocate up out of place uh, if I close my jaw real tight, um, or at all. But, uh, so the mouth guard allows me to close it and I think the muscles appreciate um, being able to work together. If I have a closed jaw, I think it goes a little bit better. But anyways, it just straps down and then I've got the, the strap attached to one side and then the other side's got a carabiner. Uh, so I can attach it in a variety of ways and, um, and I'll basically do four different isometrics, forward, backwards, right, and left. And I like to involve a band for my arms to pull on just because if I'm doing a, a posterior sort of pulling backwards sort of motion, I like to involve the rest of my posterior chain, even if it's not at a significant intensity, just to get the other muscles working together uh, really seems to reduce aggravation and um, it just feels better. And I think, um, you know, I can, I can challenge my neck more safely at a higher intensity if it's got a team of muscles working together. Um, even if it's mostly just uh, symbolic, really. Uh, but I'll do that forward, backward, and even to the sides, um, where I like to have my arms involved and uh, just kind of make my neck muscles feel like they're, they're on a team and it's not a, entirely an isolation exercise. And this, um, I, I'm really cautious about going anywhere near failure. Uh, but typically I'll set a timer for like 45 or 60 seconds and, um, and go by that. Or I'll just see how I feel and just kind of be cautious. Um, but I've had a good, a good success. My neck's been getting stronger. I don't really have the intense neck spasms that I used to. Um, and it really just feels more stable. And when I turn my head, it's not like an owl bobblehead sort of situation anymore. I get a nice, I like hit a bumper when I get to a reasonable range of motion and it's just fantastic. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I've been doing. I do wanna be clear that it's kind of a, my own invention, which should give you pause because I'm just some random guy on the internet. Um, I ran it by my physical therapist. They were supportive, thought I was on the right track, um, but you should certainly talk to your physical therapist and see if it's appropriate for you. And this isn't just a disclaimer, I, I sincerely, uh, suggest you use your doctors and your physical therapists as a resource. If you come to them with specific questions, say, is this exercise performed this way, you know, appropriate for me? What are your concerns, suggestions? Um, you know, it could really be beneficial for you. Most of you probably shouldn't be uh, jump roping. Um, this came as like sort of like a, in a bundle. I can't remember what extra equipment it was with. Um, I started doing jump rope maybe like six months ago or so. And I like it. It's, um, it's a good lower body warm up. Um, and the other thing is that it kind of brings a little bit of agility and like quickness and coordination that I like because I'm not a bodybuilder or a power lifter. I think of myself as an athlete, um, but my sport is navigating life with a connective tissue disorder. And it's a little bit different than lacrosse or basketball, but there are some similarities. You know, if I'm riding the bus and holding on to the post, you know, I want to be able to lock down my shoulder and I want to have the muscle mass and the strength and the control to uh, protect myself from injury, you know, but I also want agility. If I miss the bottom stair uh, going down the steps, I want to be able to catch myself. I want to have quickness and I want to be able to move through, you know, a variety of ranges. And if I'm walking a dog and I get twisted, I want to have the, the core strength and the stability to lock it down and protect myself. Um, so that kind of falls in that category where, uh, on its own, it might seem absurd, 
but I do want to build up my body's tolerance for slightly jarring things and just that quickness and agility and I don't want you know one dimensional strength this is this is about functional use of my body and carryover in real world situations and the other thing is that you don't have to jump rope the same way you did in kindergarten you know it doesn't have to be a super jarring thing if you're just doing little hops or if you're doing mostly with your legs and I, I'm glad I waited until my second year of training, but I, I do think it's, it's a valuable avenue for me to be pursuing at this point. Another thing I've got here, I made like a stretching strap from the same webbing that pretty much everything else is made out of. Um, and it's just got some loops in it. And I have mostly run into trouble with stretching. My, my policy is strengthen first, maybe stretch later. Uh, the one exception is my hamstrings. I've been doing something called PNF stretching, proprioceptive neural feedback, I believe is the, the name for it. Uh, and the idea is that you uh, push against something immovable, you know, a wall or a strap that's being held, and you push against it with your leg, and you push, 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 push for, say, 10 seconds, and then you uh, stop pushing with the muscle, with your hamstring or whatever, but you keep pulling with the strap. Um, and then your muscle, when you stop pushing, will just give you a little bit more. And then you can, in that new position, push, 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 you know, for 10 seconds or so, and then you relax and it gives you a little bit more. So I, that's the only type of stretching that hasn't uh, been troublesome for me. Next up is uh, grip training. So I've got a couple of these adjustable gripper thingies. Um, you can dial it down for lower intensity um, or all the way up. You could also do um, kind of a higher intensity and like give a little boost with the other hand and then do kind of a negative sort of thing. Um, the eccentric phase of an exercise, you know, there's the concentric where you're pulling and then the eccentric is where you're controlling the, the stretch of the muscle and you're resisting the lengthening. Um, and they're, they're sort of separate. Um, it's kind of interesting that the concentric phase and the eccentric phase seem to have slightly different adaptation processes and neural pathways. Um, so um, they're certainly, you know, sort of both valuable. And you, a lot of people will just focus on, you know, squeeze, 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 where the, the eccentric portion, actually there's some evidence that it, it's uh, more effective at stimulating adaptation and connective tissue. So if you want to strengthen your tendons, um, then the eccentric phase is going to be really valuable. So I've put a really high emphasis on eccentric exercises, things like you know, pull-up negatives. Um, now I'll do like, you know, weighted negative pull-ups and things like that, or you know, just um, pretty much any exercise. If you're if you're doing push-ups and you push and then controlling that descent on the way back down is really crucial. And most people, they're just, they're just doing push, 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 and then they just drop back down. And it's like, it feels good because you can do a bunch of push-ups, um, but really you're missing out on one of the best benefits of exercise. And if you have a connective tissue disorder, uh, it's especially tragic to miss out on the eccentric portion. So pretty much everybody else uh, kind of dismisses it and they have to really be you know encouraged to include it in their training but if you can put an emphasis on eccentric uh, the eccentric portion of the exercises it's really going to be beneficial for you I think there, there could be certain exercises where it's not as appropriate I don't know I'm just you know obviously I'm not a voice of authority um, but for me pretty much wherever I can I'll at least spend more time on the eccentric if not trying to load it up and um, kind of break new grounds as far as strength um, to, to get, keep my connective tissue adaptation running a little bit ahead of my strength or my concentric strength. This one's kind of a stretch, but the rest of them are door related. I'm gonna, I'm gonna consider doors and doorways equipment. So presuming you live in a house, you probably have already have access to one of these, um, but I do a grip training exercise where I'll just grip the door uh, with one hand, or I'll start out with both, and then I'll lean back and then remove one hand. And there's sort of an anti-rotational aspect where I don't want my torso to twist, 
um, which I think that anti-rotation is certainly valuable. There's, there are other ways you can target it, but um, also the grip training of just having kind of a slippery surface where it's really gonna be the squeeze and how, how much you can crush that door is gonna determine how long you can hold it. And so, um, you know, I'll hold it as long as I can and then, you know, safely grab it with the other one and switch. And I would just alternate back and forth, aiming for, again, you know, 30, 45, 60 seconds, something like that. The other thing that doorways are helpful for is developing uh, scapular, um, I don't know about scapular strength, but scapular communication and control. Uh, because controlling your scapula can be a real um, advantage when you go into things like pull-ups or dips. Because a lot of times, your weak link is going to be your ability to hold your scapula down against resistance or back against resistance or push forward. Um, so just developing the connection between your brain and your scapular, scapular muscles is really valuable. So what I'll do is just go in a doorway and then I'll give a little boost with my calves, but I'll be pulling down and practicing that scapular depression. Uh, and that's, I think, a, a good kind of mind-muscle connection sort of exercise. Uh, just to sort of warm them up and get communication going. Um, or if you want to do several reps, uh, you, could, you could probably turn that into a, a meaningful exercise to develop some, some strength and control. I found strengthening my TBA really valuable. It's your transverse abdominis. It's sort of a weird muscle um, and it's really hard to target. So um, people will do things like stomach vacuums, um, I, what I do is I'll sort of do the vacuum where I'll stand in a doorway and I'll pull in my TVA as much as I can and pull it, pull it, pull it. And there's sort of an upper part and a lower part. And you, you just try to pull the whole thing in. And so the first round, I'll just try to drive a bunch of intensity into my TVA and just pull it as hard as I can. Um, and I'll go like 45 to 60 seconds on that, where if I think I can go more than 60, I try to drive more intensity in. If I don't think I'm gonna make it to 45, you know, maybe that's okay, maybe I, I dial it back a little bit. But the first round, I just sort of do it straight on, um, just pure TVA. And then I do a round where I'll uh, push against the doorway, and so I use my arms to apply a rotational force, and then I resist it with my core, while, again, focusing on the TVA, and really, really pulling in as much as I can. And combining the TVA with the anti-rotation, I just think is a really functional way to uh, challenge my core. Um, and I think it's been really helpful for me. This one, um, there, are, there are other people doing kind of similar exercises, but it's a little bit of my own invention. So definitely be cautious. Um, but um, yeah, there are people doing like stomach vacuums where a similar exercise and there are probably ways to progress up to this. Um, you know, I can't really speculate on what exercises would be appropriate for others. Uh, but this, I feel like, since I'm just standing in a doorway, kind of pushing against stuff, the injury risk is really low. Um, but I'm actually able to drive a lot of intensity in, and getting a really strong TBA is super functional, where I'll use this like pretty much all day. If I'm out for a walk, I've got my, my TBA engaged. Um, you know, and if I'm, you know, standing up or doing whatever, um, pretty much anything, I'll, I'll try to engage my TVA and it just straps everything down and it squeezes the blood out of your abdominal cavity um, and supports your internal organs so they don't have to hang on the connective tissue. There's a lot of benefits. And once you have a good, strong TVA, you get a little bit more nuanced control of it. So it's not just an on or off thing. You can kind of set it to like 15%, you know, activation or something like that and so you can have a little bit of TVA activation during say you know a casual walk um, and so I'll, I'll be using it a lot and I you know I think about my posture a lot and I think about my breathing but I also think about my TVA uh, when I'm out walking around it probably looks like kind of a casual thing um, but it's sort of a, a juggling act and my TVA is definitely one of those elements that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on so I realize it's a weird looking exercise, um, but you know, I think it's been really valuable for me. So I wanted to share, maybe you don't want to do it this way, but if you can find some way to train your TVA, I think it's going to pay off for you. And believe it or not, 
we've made it to the end of the video. So that's it. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. And um, obviously you should be going to others for better explanations of exercises and figuring out what's appropriate for you. Talk to your doctor, your physical therapist, use your own judgment. Um, but uh, hopefully this has illuminated some of the, the barriers that I've run into and how I navigate around them and maybe gives you some idea of what equipment you might want or uh, what you direction you want to go with your training. So uh, best of luck to you. Bye-bye.